Brock here from Roger Gardening with a very quick update. I've spoken before about how we prune uh, Japanese maples like the Japanese. In my last video I said I'd do some drawings just to try and explain it a little better. Um, so here we go. Maples grow from a node in three separate stems. The leader and these two side shoots. That's the standard and that's the first thing for you to understand. After the first node, as I've shown in a couple of my videos, you get exactly the same three except for one difference. And the one difference being is that these grow horizontally, these grow vertically. It's quite difficult to see in 2D like this, so what I do to try and explain it better to you is show it you in planes. As you can see here, they grow first, if we want to call this a horizontal plane, then in the vertical, then in the horizontal, then in the vertical. It's when pruning and day-to-day -day pruning your Japanese maples in Japan whereby Ordinarily, you remove these planes, these vertical planes, in order to get those horizontal layers that, we, uh, that are so desirable from a Japanese maple. Now, some people have actually said that the Japanese remove this leader, and some do. What I tend to find is in year one, it's actually best to leave it. And let me give you a very quick example here. If we say there are three off the next node, you will get another three. Off this next node, you'll get three more. Now look at this, look what happens here. We get the crossing, which we don't want. We get the crossing that we don't want. So if we leave it and don't take out this leader straight away, we may have a desire for the tree to follow this path. In which case we can remove all of this growth. We might not want this growth and we might want this leader going this way and we'll take out this one. By leaving the leader, very quickly you were given that option if that's what you so choose if you remove it you remove that possibility so there we go they're the basics um, that I've explained before on a tree now to try and explain in a bit more detail about when you're doing what I call structural pruning in order to make this tree look as Japanese as possible here is a bog standard maple that you would see in a Western garden that's been left almost unpruned what a Western gardener would look to do primarily is to say, I need to get my lawnmower under this. I need to raise this. So I'm gonna prune everything below this line. What they also might say is, I need to drive my car near it. So they might prove everything from here. And so you get this almost vase shaped maple, which you've seen in some of my examples and on some of my posts. Now, let's understand the structure of this maple a bit more. That may be how it looks inside. Again, it's crudely drawn, but simplistic to show you that we branch and branch and branch on a three, and then again, you get another three, etc., etc., etc. Now, one of the big problems with this particular example is that once again, you have symmetry here. The split perfectly from a central node provides perfect symmetry, something the Japanese traditionally don't like. So one of the first things you can do if you wish to structurally prune this tree is go and find from the bottom of the trunk up the opposite bud uh, away from the leader and remove it. So for example, in this case, you would remove this one. You'd keep this one. You'd remove this one. You'd keep this one. You'd remove this one. You'd keep this one. You'd remove this one. You'd keep this one. You also wouldn't want a very fanned out, perfectly symmetrical top. So whilst you'd take this one, I would also encourage anyone to take the leader. What does that look like? Here we have the maple having removed all the opposite buds and the top leader. Now the next thing we do is what I said before about those verticals. So the vertical in this instance would be this here, it'd be this here, it'd be this here, it'd be this here, and it'd be this here. However, as we're structurally pruning, we actually want these branches to become more horizontal. So in this instance, I would also take out the leader. I take out the leader. I take out the leader. Take out the leader. Take out the leader. And how does that leave you? Here you end up with a far more Japanese looking maple. It may look a bit bare, but once again, this is an example. And obviously I wouldn't recommend doing this whole prune in one go. Um, you know, this will take a number of years to, to get this effect. But if you think what's now going to happen in the summer when this is going to leaf out, you're going to end up 
with something looking more like this. I'm sure you'd agree something that looks far more Japanese as a maple than the original. Remember, there is no difference between this tree and this tree other than the way that it was pruned. Now obviously you can see there's an awful lot of detail that's gone into this. This is what the Japanese do in order to achieve these effects. Finally, the Japanese, if I'm completely honest with you, would still not like this. Reason being is the trunk is extremely straight. So what they would come and do is something perhaps even more radical, and it would encourage side branching. And that is, they would prune the entire trunk right there. What this would leave you with is something far smaller to start with, yes. But what you will find is everywhere where we have pruned every year, you will get new growth. So here, you will get new growth. Here, you will get new growth. And here, you will get new growth. From this new growth, perhaps the Japanese would take this and encourage this to be the new leader in order to gain a trunk that would then perhaps go in a different direction and be far less vertical. So, if what you're after is something more like this than the Western style, then follow my tips. Any questions?